Hey everybody, this is Home is Hot 22. Um, I'm a bit tired at the moment. This is uh, fairly marginal. Just the button ends up being a weaker player. It's it's very close though, using a like 2.25 sizing. Um, oh, I'm talking about table three, ace nine. I'm a bit tired. I'm gonna check range on the flop. It's supposed to be a really high EV board for him. Once he ends up checking back, uh, I think just using like really big overbets in this spot with a very high frequency is like quite a reasonable play. If he's like checking back two caps ever, like blocking the ace of hearts, it's uh, not as good. I'm just gonna use a random number here, twenty five. Eh, okay, it seems appropriate rolling a twenty five. I basically, like, any sort of, like, betting strategy I have there, I just want to go absolutely massive. Assuming that, again, he's too capped and I check range on the flop. So, I was just a bit concerned having the ace of hearts. We reduce his continue frequency quite a bit. And we end up unblocking various just random bluffs that he's going to end up firing off. He's not calling with ace highs, but he might end up, like, improving on an ace river if he has ace five or something, something of that nature. It seemed like one of the combos that I could end up checking... A little bit more often that's actually like quite good in a slow play just with all those kind of properties but again rolling a low number and him being a recreational i don't mind the big bet at a at some frequency uh the six nine just gets mixed occasionally with three bet very very seldom i'll be uh three betting five percent here it's gonna play call Could even mix fold against some people that are <clears throat> employing a limping strategy and a race first in strategy, then their ranges become a bit stronger. Um, however, I think most people are playing an RFI strategy, and I think uh, a lot of people play worse than maybe they should. 8 8 deuce is going to be a very high V board texture for the big blind. I'm going to see bet Jack's about 20 25% somewhere in there. Uh, rolling 63, going to go with the check. Just really high EV board for the, or not even high EV, but I mean, yeah, it is, I mean, they will end up expecting a lot. And we're going to end up check raising this occasionally. I'll check raise this once I check it about 20% of the time. Uh, rolling 14, we're going to go with the check raise. We're only using half pot uh, raises. Now you guys can actually see my RNG, I hope. So you guys don't know, I mean, maybe like some people have like told me, oh, you're lying. You're just like doing whatever action you want. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> I just try to play good strategies. Uh, someone told me, oh, you're lying. You're just doing whatever. You're full of shit. Uh, definitely not the case. I don't really think there's uh, much point to that. If I was doing something for exploitative reasons, which occasionally I don't even roll, I just think like someone is overdoing this or overdoing that or their, or their range just really fucks. I'm going to take action X, then I take action X. Um... And we're not necessarily like, well, like, I'm not trying to play at equilibrium. I'm trying to play good strategies against what I think they're doing, good balance strategies against what I think they're doing. It's not like, oh, I'm bluffing 100% here or there. But um, if I think maybe they're too weak in some note, I'll just bluff more often and I'll go more thinly, this sort of thing, these kind of adjustments, just gain a bit more EV with my entire range. I don't think the uh, approach of just, oh, let's bluff everything here because uh, they're weak makes a whole lot of sense once you're. Once you're playing opposition, that it ends up being a bit stronger. I mean, every single player is different, <clears throat> especially on the American sites where, in general, people are going to play a lot worse on average relative to maybe like some of the sites like Party Poker or Poker Stars or um, just, just tough games like that, basically. I feel like the more I talk, the shorter videos I want to make. I kind of didn't want to do so much talking. Uh, Ace-9 is just a mixed three bet. Ace-9 offsuit blind versus blind. He's supposed to be opening something like 45% of the time. Um, eh, I'll three bet this about 15%. The, the lower weaker aces, we three bet a hell of a lot more. Going with the call rolling 53. It's very high EV board texture for him. However, we do end up having some straights, and we do end up getting to raise at some frequency. Uh, just not having a heart here. Also, versus the sizing, we might have zero raises. Um, the thing is, he's supposed to be opening over 500 combos, and Ace-King only makes up for 16 combos when we have a bunch of King-9 and 8-9. Uh, so I wonder if like those leverage effects are like so strong that we don't develop any sort of raising range. Certainly against like a smaller bet size, I think we should develop some raises. Um, I'm going to elect to not have any raises with Ace-9 without a heart, though. 
So I do think it's one of our like goes to go to hands to raise at some frequency with a heart. Uh, turn once we end up calling. Uh, I think this can just play a fairly high frequency check. We've got like loads of weaker hard trust. Some of them. I also think that like in this note, he's supposed to play check raise on the turn at some frequency. Not very often though. Keep in mind. I think once he ends up betting huge, uh, the turn check raise frequency gets reduced for out of position. Um, I think I'm just going to go with the check back almost at a pure frequency. Thinking about it, uh, but it depends on. If, I guess if I'm not raising eight nine, uh, I'm just thinking about my range here. Um, I'm actually going to play a couple different bet sizes, thinking about it a bit more. If he lacks check raise, I'm going to use a small bet, like one fourth pot, and then occasionally I'm going to use just a big over bet, and I'm going to do this under 20% of the time. It's rolling 73. I'm just going to go with the check. If I rolled something like a five or lower, I'd probably over bet, and then if I rolled something like a five to 20, 15 or something, I might go with a very, very small bet on the turn. Uh, clear river check. It's interesting, he did find one of the slow plays that maybe he should have, blocking a lot of my continues. Quite a logical hand to have. However, I think he has a clear block bet on the river as opposed to a uh, check. I think it's a very high frequency block with the queen jack on the river. I don't think he should be checking that all that often. I think if he had, like, something like pocket tens or if he had something like i don't know jack 10 he would have a pretty clear check just blocking my calling range but uh yeah i think he just needs to i mean i mean there are a lot of 10x in my range that i need to be folding the flop with but i just think in terms of blockers it plays very very high frequency block bet on over a7 i'm gonna come close to a pure fold yeah i'm just gonna pure fold this king nine we can mix 87 will fold. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to think of a note to take on him. I, I always find it interesting, like, trying to figure out, like, what I should be noting on these people. I, I guess, like, kind of some of the notes are just, like, not blindly front dooring value BVB. Having some stronger checks where possibly aware of blocking continues, etc. So just like trying to get some ideas as to like how these people construct their ranges is pretty good. Um, a lot of people are not doing a lot of mixing and they'll just be fairly consistent with how they like to play their ranges. We'll three bet this 15% of the time. Seems fine. Rolling 27 going with the call. Uh, really we're supposed to be like folding some of the weaker queens here. Uh, Pre-flop. Queen six is like very cuspy. However, again, I defend a bit wider. Ace five suited specifically, we can end up going with a four bet with this combo. Four bet this about half of the time. Uh, yep, 45. We just want to get our four bet frequency correct here, and we don't want to just be like so ace queen and like so king queen heavy in this situation. We want to have some of the hands like ace five at some frequency, and it's kind of like my go to wheel ace for the four bet um nines i'm gonna come close to a pure call but i'm gonna mix again a hint of four bet in here like 10 percent i'm not gonna have any leads whatsoever on the monotone board but if you look at the three betting range relative to the out of position calling range we end up having a slight flush advantage our range first of all is like very narrow and then in addition to the fact that it's very narrow it's incredibly like suited card heavy whereas the in position range is a bit more diluted with actual pairs and just like sort of like offsuit broadway hands so we end up having in terms of the strategies i think people end up reopening turn and river more often than they're actually supposed to i should mix this combo though i will mix it 
It's, it's just supposed to be better on the turn at some frequency, especially if he's not getting the uh, correct slow plays in his range. Betting one third on the turn is not too much. Like, so this guy's probably going to be reopening more often than he should. And I, it's, it's not a definite thing, but I definitely want to be aware that possibly if he's delaying too often, then I don't even need to probe so often. I can just... Oh, this ace-king should be mixed. The four and the five are pretty good for an position. Obviously, we have a call with this combo. Pure checking the river. River, we will have some frequency of flush here, but not very often. Most of them are just going to be uh, racing. And obviously, we just have a clear shove here. Um, he will have pocket jacks, and he will have... Uh, um, some slow played flushes specifically like ace king ace queen of spades that's fine <clears throat> he he can have those um, we're essentially developing a lot of bluffs with specifically the ace of spades like ace queen off ace king off with the ace of spades here um, and we need to be fairly aggressive with that and I, I think just like the basically the best sizing for range is going to be all in I don't think there are a whole lot of and like yeah we're just going to run into Jackson like sort of um, ace ten of spades quite often, but I think this is going to be the best strategy for our range here. Now we could argue, oh, are we ever calling here? He looks strong, blah blah blah. Um, <clears throat> those are those are like reasonable things, but when we end up finding a lot of bluffs with the ace of spades, it, I, I think it just makes a lot of sense. Range versus range, it might be a bot if this guy. It's a very interesting play. I would not be surprised if we found that that guy was a bot. Now, now that look, that probably sounds ridiculous, but the thing is, is I've just like played against a lot of bots for a long time, and like I find that a lot of the American regulars are not particularly good, and they're not so balanced in these situations. He definitely could just be a strong player. Um, I'm fifty five. We're just gonna jam this. Uh, it's it's pretty hard to find enough bluffs here. Uh, it's not like we're continuing a six too often on the turn. And it's not like he's going to be betting with like five six of hearts and stuff. But still, it's just just high EV spot to be jamming. He just needs to be calling basically some sets and some straights at some frequency. Um, yeah, that's a mixed strategy hand on the river. Uh, sixes we're going to mix. 30 we'll go with the three bet. Queen five very clear fold. Nine seven we're gonna fold a hundred percent. I don't quite get these. I just know the color, but I don't have any meaning for that rock or whatever. What is a rock? Is that like a knit? I don't quite even, I don't even understand what those, what are these terms? 
Maniac, I know what a maniac is. Solid, okay, streamer, calling station, tight, bad, tight, good. I don't even know what those fucking things mean. Like, I get some of them, but just such weird, like, general thingies. Okay. Um, seven, nine. I'm going to go with the fold, but it's a bit wider than optimal, but a lot of people weren't playing particularly well. However, we did just see this list guy play a hand very well. <laughs> so I'm just assuming that I don't, I don't want to be deviating too much and opening button way too wide if he is actually finding the uh, correct frequency if opens. Uh, just mix strategy three bit and call. Rolling eighty seven will go with the call. Uh, I think we just pure check raise this. I might roll like ten percent call though. Okay, a hundred we're actually going to go with the call. This is literally the ten percent that we were talking about. I'm almost never going with coal there, though. I just think people actually end up, like, maybe front dooring too often. I like having these hands in my range very occasionally. Uh, turn here. So the ace-queen, eight. It's a spot where we don't end up, like, probing a whole... Okay, 85. I'm actually going to go with the check. It's almost 100% turn probe, but it's... <clears throat> I think it's not quite 100 Uh, 26, we just, I think we just pure check raise eights here. Something like that. I don't think we go too big. And turn, I think this is almost a pure check raise. We could go larger as well than $26 in this particular situation. We could go much larger. Um... Once we actually arrive to this node with this particular hand, I think uh, just like, <laughs> uh, I think there are probably a lot of shoves going on. I guess this shove here, I kind of think this guy's just not jamming that much ace king and like having almost specifically aces and kings far more often than he's supposed to. This looks like a tight fold, but I kind of think it is just a fold given the actual action sequence. I don't know. I think we just need to be mixing different sizings here, and we're definitely never checking. Um, it's like one of the only hands that we ever have that have a check raise that don't block spades and hearts. 13 is going to be the, the lowest number, so it's going to be the biggest sizing. Um, I'm probably only using a shove sizing. I, I, I don't think I'm using it terribly often, though. Less than 25% of the time. 30% of the time, because most of my, like, super hands that are going to want to be like using a shove sizing because like we really have to worry about specifically pocket eights in that action sequence and like we're kind of doing like the smaller check raise sizing will be done with something like eight seven or a seven or queen eight or something something blocking the pocket eights region um it's gonna play check and i i, I might be getting exactly what i'm saying slightly wrong but i i, I think um we don't want to just like use, I, I, we can't just like pure shove uh, or, or we shouldn't be just like going all in with a seven on the river all the time. I think that's slightly too aggressive. And also I think we, I think we just had, should have some mix sizings with that particular combo. Um, 56 on the river. Uh, we just need to defend this sometimes, obviously. Um, it seems like mostly he'll just have value though in terms of where we are in our range. Uh, our 10 blockers actually quite Oh, yeah, our 10 blocker is pretty bad here. 
Uh, I'm going to call this just 20% and probably call a bit more often with uh, better blockers. Uh, yeah, we're just going to fold. Uh, 10 blockers, pretty bad. But we're supposed to be calling that river a hell of a lot. I'm just like slightly inclined to think that the guy, and yeah, by the way, at equilibrium, we're supposed to call a lot more than 20% uh, with that combo. But I'm slightly inclined to believe that he's just going to be there with a bit too much, specifically King X. And yeah, I'm slightly afraid of that mixing the 7 2, rolling 80 die, going with the check back. Um. I don't think there's a big frequency of freeze here with 7-2, but I will mix a low frequency in here, 10%. Yeah, going with the call. Um, so List, I think, is a guy that ends up probably playing a pretty good strategy where he's not having so many check raises, but he can end up checking like some stronger hands that give me less incentive to use really big sizes with my range. As a result, I'm not going to have any big sizes whatsoever on the river. Um, given that I think he's a bit more balanced, I want to pick a size and that I can just bet with like Jack X. Um, and yeah, better. And just choose one sizing, not trying to do anything exploitative there. It's just a very easy, uh, simplification. We're going 80, 20, to so like 18 bucks okay dun, dun, dun. ace queen king nine uh, just kind of go with the open it's fine especially against someone that is likely weaker um Pretty standard four bet call here with the ace queen. Shove also works. Pure check with this combo. Um, it's a, it's actually a bit aggressive. I shouldn't say like it's a obvious pure get in. I've like played slightly more aggressive strategies in these spots. Uh, I'm actually gonna mix. Okay, five is gonna be shove for me. When we have shoves in our range occasionally, we just uh, kind of hurt some of the EV. Like, uh, if he's not getting the frequency exactly correct, uh, I, I, either way, I think just playing an aggressive strategy. Like, there are a lot of hands, mine versus mine, that we want to have shoves with. Uh, Ace-King actually performs a bit better than Ace-Queen, obviously, but um, some people might think, oh, well, maybe we should do the opposite. Maybe we should shove Ace-King and Ace-Queen and go smaller. We're going to three-bit this. Could go very slightly smaller than 20. Versus Jimmy, I'm almost tempted to check back. I'm going to go with a bit. Okay, Jimmy. Good boy. Good boy, Jimmy. Yeah, you a good boy, Jimmy. Jimmy is a very delicious fellow. Nine ten very clear open, especially with a weaker small blind. Uh, just gonna pure check my range, barring like the absolute nuttest combos versus a wreck. Uh, this texture, and I'm gonna end up using a pretty high frequency delay for small. Also, could check as well. And mostly three betting ace 10. Yep. 12 and a half big blinds. See, it's fine. A uh, very polar spot. We end up going a bit larger big blind versus button than. Small blind versus button, and I think the king jack just pure folds versus MP, but mixes versus the cutoff, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, 6-4. Okay, we'll go with the call. This list guy, I, I hate to say, like, oh, maybe someone's a bot. Like, that's, like, crazy talk. But when I was playing on Party and, and there were, like, so many bots and it was just, like, dead clear who the bots were. Um, you have to be, like, uh, okay, if he was on Stars or something, I would definitely not say, oh, bot. I would say, okay, he's a good player probably. He's aware of his own range. But there are just so few Americans that are good players. And it's, like, so hard to find someone that's playing... Like, okay, it sounds like, oh, like maybe that was just like a good GTO play, which it absolutely was, but human beings executed in that exact fashion with the small delay and everything at such a low frequency that it definitely like puts uh, flags in my head. And as I said, he's supposed to even like have those hands in that action sequence. I just don't think that American rakes generally do. So when that happens, I think he's either like probably a European here. He's just a very strong American, which there aren't too many of or he's uh, a bot and bot seems like definitely in the realm of possibility I'm just going to click pot against this guy anytime I'm having a 3 bet range my range is just incredibly strong um, it may disincentivize people from like 4 betting something like 10s or 9s and just realizing that my range is really strong here but whatever I'm going to go with a check back Mostly I'm betting range, but against a wreck at this SPR, I quite like checking back and going with the turn call and just calling this river and with the check. Yeah, pocket jacks. Okay. Cool. Oh, good to know he's probing turn a bit wide, probing turn a bit marginal to check river. I don't remember how many big blinds it was. 60 BB. Not four bed bedding all in with check check button versus BB and fold this open this open this oh don't fold the king ten god damn it piece of shit mm -hmm. I don't understand how people can play like so many tables. I just don't get it. It's not something that I'm capable of, nor do I wish to be. I think like depth is uh, depth is so much more relevant than uh, anything else. So I think I'm gonna end this video and like just start on a part two. Uh, so everybody, thanks for watching. This is Omas Hot Twenty Two, and uh, yeah. Tune in for part two.